Okay, here we're going to be looking at a futures contract used in the hedging of the sale of some inventory and how this contract's fair value or its market value is broken down between its intrinsic value and its time value. First I'll go through and show how to calculate these values, then I'll show how they're recorded on our balance sheet and recognized as gains and losses on the income statement. Let's focus in on our example here. For this example, we'll have a producer uh, that has a commodity inventory item such as grain or wheat and he decides to hedge its sale by purchasing a futures contract and the details are shown here. Now the spot rates and the future rates that I'm using in this example are based on a price per pound for that commodity item. Okay, to determine the change in fair value or the market value of this future contract for each period. First, we must determine the fair value of the contract for each period. We do that by comparing the futures rate uh, or price here at the contract start date with the futures price for the period that we're looking at. And the fair value of this contract is based on the changes here of the future prices over the life of this contract. So looking at our June 1st uh, period here, we compare this future price here of 0.635 with the 0.650 price here on May 1st, or that would be the contract start date, and we have a decline in price. This would be a gain on our futures contract because we're paying less for the commodity here being purchased under this contract but at the same, ti same time, we'd be having a loss here on the inventory that we're selling under contract. Of course, the opposite would be true for an increase here in this future price, where we would have a, uh, in this case, we'd be having a loss. Okay, to determine the amount of gain or loss, we would multiply the change in our rate or our price here times the quantity that we have under contract. So for each successive period, we'd be comparing here are the futures rate at the start of this contract date with the current rate or the futures rate here for the period. So looking at our July 1st period here, we'd be comparing this 0.624 futures rate here with the 0.650 futures rate here at the contract start date of May 1st. And again, we'd have a decline here in prices. So we'd have a gain here on this futures contract. Okay, to determine the change here in fair value for each period for this futures contract, we're looking at accumulative changes here in gains and losses for the periods. So looking at our first period here of June 1st, we'd uh, take the gain here of $1,500 for the period and then we'd subtract out any gain or loss for the previous period. In this case, it was at the contract inception here, so it had no value. So our uh, change here in fair value was $1,500. Looking at our next period here of July 1st, we take the gain here in this case of $2,600 that we calculated for the fair value and we'd subtract out the previous uh, uh, periods. In this case, it was a $1,500 gain. So we'd subtract that from the $2,600 and we'd end up with a $1,100 change here in fair value for this uh, July 1st period. And then looking at our last period here for August 15th, uh, we had a uh, gain for the period of $4,000, so we'd be subtracting this previous, uh, again, we had a gain here of $2,600 for the previous period, so we'd subtract that $2,600 from the $4,000, and then we have a change here in favor, fair value for the period of $1,400. So just remember here, when we're calculating our um, change in fair value for the period, we're looking at a cumulative change here between our gains and losses for the period. Okay, to determine the change here in intrinsic value for each period for this futures contract. Now the intrinsic value is the value of the contract if it were exercised today. And what we do here is we compare the spot rates between periods. So looking at our first period here of June 1st, we compare this 0.628 spot rate here of June 1st with the spot rate here at the inception of the contract on May 1st here of 0 0.640. And we had a reduction here in our price for the period. So taking the difference here, we actually had a gain in intrinsic value of $1,200 for the period. So looking at our uh, next period here of July 1st, we had a spot rate of 0.622 compared to that with the previous month spot rate here of 0.628. And again, we had a reduction here in uh, prices. So we had a gain here in intrinsic value of $600. Looking at our last period here of August 15th, where we had a spot rate of 0.6 and compare that 
that to the previous um, uh, period here of July 1st of 0.622 and again we had a reduction here in prices so we would have recognized the gain here in intrinsic value that was the difference here between the 0.622 and the 0.610 spot rates and we had a gain here in intrinsic value of $1,200. Okay, to determine the change here in time value for each period for this futures contract. Now the time value of the contract is the amount by which the price of this contract exceeds the intrinsic value. So we have two ways to determine the time the change in time value of the contract. The first would be to use the arithmetic here where we're determining the change here between the spot rate and the future rate between the previous period and the period that we're uh, calculating here. So just looking at this first period here or the June 1st period here we'd be taking the change here uh, of 650 for the future rate and comparing it with the spot rate here of 640 and then we'd be subtracting the difference between the future rate here of 0.635 and the difference here of 6.28 so just looking at the arithmetic here you can look at how we made that subtraction here and you take that times the quantity under contract and we have here a change in time value of time value of three hundred dollars or we can do the uh, other method here where we look at the change here in the fair value of the contract minus the change here in the intrinsic value of the contract and that's based on the equation here where the fair value of this contract equals the intrinsic value portion of the contract plus the time value portion of the contract so just looking at our first uh, period here of June 1st so we had a change here in ver fair value of fifteen hundred dollars and then our change here in intrinsic value was twelve hundred dollars so you'd subtract the change here or the change here in intrinsic value from the change here in fair value and you'd have a net amount here of three hundred dollars that would be the fifteen hundred dollar amount minus the twelve hundred dollar intrinsic value amount and you would do the same here for each of these next periods here where for the July 1st period here, you'd be looking at the change here and in, in the futures rate and spot rate here of the June 1st period and then compare that to the change here in the futures rate and the spot rate here of the July 1st period. And then the difference between the two here would be the change here in time value. Or again, you just go back here and you look here at the change value and the, uh, of the fair value for that um, a July 1st period of $1,100 and then the change here in your intrinsic value was $600 and subtracting the uh, $600 here from your change here in your fair value of $1,100 you have a $500 uh, uh, change here in time value and that compares to our arithmetic uh, method here of $500 that we calculated. Okay to record this hedging transaction First, looking at our futures contract, either as a payable or receivable. Any change here in the intrinsic value for the gain or loss on a futures contract would be included, and any change here in the time value for any gain or loss on this futures contract would also be included. And we'd recognize as a gain or loss here as part of net income. In this case, it was all gains here, so we recognize it as gains here as part of net income. And then looking at our inventory account, that would include only the change in the intrinsic value for any gain or loss on this inventory inventory and we'd also recognize it as a gain or loss here as part of net income. In this case we had a loss here so we recognize it as a loss here as part of net income. And then for our cash account here we would increase it for the actual price that we received when we sold that inventory and then we also in this case we would had a settlement of this futures contract and it was a receivable here so we increased our cash amount by the value of that futures contract in this case it was four thousand dollars and then our sales revenue that would be based on the actual price that we received here for that uh, sale of that inventory and then our cost of goods sold was whatever the carrying value was for that inventory